Hey, Redeeming Life Church, Pastor Brian here on the audio and on the screen in front of you is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. Why? Well, because I've recently had some people come and ask if there were maybe some tools I could impart to them or help them with so that they could study Hebrews better on their own or the epistles better for that matter, or even the whole of the Bible. And of course, yes, here's the Bible study bookmark, and it has good questions. I recommended uh, some books and things, but, but this is simple. I thought, this doesn't have to be hard. We can just go through some scripture together. Maybe you'll pick up some easy tools that you can do at home. Nothing, nothing complicated here. Uh, so if this is something you're interested in, let's just take a few minutes. Let's just go through some scripture together, and maybe we'll learn something. Obviously, this is not going to be very polished or edited. I don't even know how this is going to turn out, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. The very first rule of Bible study at home or wherever, anytime, is that you need to pray. Jesus promised that he would send a helper when he ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher, and he illuminates Scripture for us. Anytime you're working through it, say, make sense of this to me. God promises that his word doesn't come back void, and here we have his word, and he's working on us, and you are his craftsmanship, so... Let's make sure that we're bringing God into this in its entirety. So pause the video, pray, and then we'll come back to it. Assuming that you've done that, let's now read the scripture together. And we've got to remember that this little piece is in a broader context, but we're not going to go there just yet. Let's just read this together. Read along with me, starting in verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have a boldness to enter the sanctuary, or actually that says since we have boldness to enter the sanctuary, through the blood of Jesus, he has inaugurated for us a new and living way through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed in pure water. Okay, verse 23. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, since he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other all the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, so that's the text. And if you have time, read through that a little more. I would encourage you to read through it and read through it and read through it. And then let's just take a quick glance. I'm, I'm going fast here, but work through it and get your hands dirty. And I think that's the goal. God will start to reveal some things. Some of the best clues that we have when we're reading through a scripture is this word right here, therefore. Anytime you see the word therefore, you need to go back up and see what it's there for. Cheeky, funny, whatever. Uh, it's true. You need to see what this is in context of. What because of the stuff that came above, now this. And so you need to go look at that and see what, what that is. It's also important, speaking of context, to know, okay, we're in the book of Hebrews, we're in this section of Scripture. You know, this stuff just doesn't come completely isolated in a vacuum. So so read the chapter and, and read what's here and kind of see what the author has been communicating. So that, therefore, is very important. Another one that I love to draw attention to is when you see these parenthetical parenthetical helps. You know, this is the author saying, boy, I know this one needs a little bit of help. So I like that. I like to go back and get a handle on that right away. So let's see what the, the author of Hebrews was trying to show us here. Well, that is through the flesh. Let's back up. Uh, we have us new. So he has inaugurated for us a new and living way through the curtain. What's that curtain? Oh, that is through the flesh. So he clarifies this curtain and this flesh and this way that's that's new and living. Okay, so I've got that in my head as I read through this and work on it. A little bit of clarity that the author wanted to provide when you see these parenthetical statements. Those can be very, very helpful. Now, next, as we're looking at this, you might have saw some repeated words, and the repeated words are going to be really helpful. They're going to help us to break this down. They really came in clauses. I don't know if you noticed them, but in verse 19, we saw the first one. Since we have a boldness to enter the sanctuary. Okay, that's pretty helpful. And then you go down to verse 21. Since we have a great high priest. And then you see it again. Where did I see the other one there? Um, since he is who is faithful, since he who promised is 
faithful. Okay, so these senses, or because, uh, tells us, hey, because of this, then that. And let's see where those things go. Uh, since we have the boldness, I'm going to put the first one, verse 19. Since we have the boldness to enter the sanctuary, well, that leads us right to verse 20. So this sense is going to lead us right into this one. He has inaugurated this new and living way through the curtain. Because of our boldness to enter the sanctuary th through the blood of Jesus Christ, Jesus has inaugurated a new and living way. Okay, that's helpful. How about this one? Well, since we have this great high priest, sorry, my finger drawing is not so great. Since we have this great high priest, goes to right here. Let us draw near. So because of this, let us draw this. We're going to come back to the let us, let us, let us statements. Those were repeated and helpful too. This last one, instead of it going the way the other ones have, it starts over here. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope. That's verse 23, uh, without wavering. Since he who promised. So this is, this is helping us understand. Okay, because of this, then that. Now it just comes at the end of the sentence in that case. Now, I'm going kind of fast, but these, these since we have this, since we have that, uh, these are the kinds of things that are giving us some clues or some becauses. I would encourage you look for things like that, those clues. Other really good ones are so that, okay? We have this, so that, then this next thing. Or we can do this, so that. Here's the reason for it. Uh, the for or, oops, or because, you know, th that's the kind of, of, clue words that help us. And I noticed something else that was repeated, and it really comes in the, in the term of something we should do, kind of an imperative, and, and that is these let us statements. And that we saw that, since this, then that. Let us draw near with a true heart. Really, I guess really that's um, let us draw near. And then the next part is an explanation of that. Let us hold on to our confession of hope. Okay, and then the next part of that sentence is, an explanation of that and then look and let us consider one another um, and then in that so that look at this in order in order to so that because for this reason right that's very helpful let us draw near let us hold to on to the confession of our hope and let us consider one another then everything that follows those is a descriptor for this let us draw near or a descriptor for the let us hold on to the confession of our faith i mean look at this uh, with a true heart and full assurance is showing this. And then it goes on, with our hearts sprinkled clean and our bodies washed pure. Or if you go down to verse 23, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, right? <clears throat> so it's giving us a little bit of a description. Uh, then we see in, in the last let us, let us consider one another in order to provoke love and good works. And then it kind of gets to a negative. It shows us something in more of negative, not so not this way, as some are in the habit. Not neglecting to gather as some are in the habit. And then that helps us right here with, but. So now we're going back to the positive. So it's really trying to help us understand what these let us instructions are. So you notice an outline is kind of being built here. An understanding is being built. It goes, well, since this, or because of this, and this, and this, then we need to let us do this. I'm drawing with my finger. It's killing me. I hope it's helpful. Let us do this, this, this. Right? And, and then the rest of it is sort of some descriptions. And, you know, it's, it's pieces to help us understand. Here's something. Here's something. Okay, look at this. Look at this. This helps us to understand how this works. And this is a little bit of a qualifier and a little bit of a, of a help. You see how that just gave us a lot of helpful instruction, just simply getting our, our hands dirty in here. These are simple tools. Now, what was the, the reason for doing this? Well, it, it causes us to look a little more deeply, a little more intently at how these various words and clauses and phrases are connecting together. And I would encourage you just have a little notepad on the side and you just jot some notes down and you you mark some things in your Bible, you know, and maybe it's maybe you you underline so when you come to them you see it. Okay, that's really helpful. That's really helpful. You come back to it. Maybe you're writing over in the margins, you know, and you're making some notes and, and maybe, you know, you're you're circling and hopefully it's nicer than than what I just did because that would really be junky in your Bible, right? But cleanly working through this so when you come back through it you can see it really well that's the idea of just getting in this and working in it and working through it okay one more 
just quick introduction to some tools. Okay, I say one more, but there's really uh, three little tools that I want to show you uh, to do that. Let's see here. So in your Bible, you might have little notes. I'm going to use the U version. Bible app to see if I can find some in the text that we're looking at. And then I would just encourage as you're going through this, these are things you already have. They're already right there. When you see the little note, in this case, it's this little, it's this little dot, dot, dot thing. But it, down in the bottom, you might see a little letter A next to a word in your Bible. Go down to your footnotes or opened. Okay, that's a little bit of a translation note or it might have a note for clarity. If you have those in your Bible, those are great tools and they're right there. So, you know, use them. Another really helpful tool that you probably have in your Bible is cross-references, right? Sometimes they're down in the little middle column. They're real small. If you have a study Bible, you usually have some. And you have these little notes as you're going along. So as I look in Hebrews 19, this is a much more complex cross-reference. You can get something like the treasury of scriptural knowledge, which is really big, or you just get a few little things here and there. Um, when you get some of those things, then go ahead and look at the cross-references. I'm just looking at these first ones and what does this say? Okay, there's some scripture. Uh, here's some more scripture. Usually you don't have this many of two or three. You might have a little italicized note somewhere in there. I would encourage you to check out those notes. They're there for a reason. They're tools. They're not part of the inspired Word of God, but they're just tools that will help you. And then finally, just one last thing is if you have a study Bible, this is the online version of the Hebrew or the CSB study Bible for Hebrews chapter 10, over on the side, you see some notes. If you have a study Bible down in the bottom or somewhere, just read the notes. So you're working in the text, and I would encourage you to do that first. I mean, after you've prayed, work in it, take some notes, see what you think. Read some of those cross-references and let Scripture interpret Scripture and help you bring things out there and let God illuminate things. Look at the little translator notes and then look at the commentary that might be there so that you can take a look at just a few verses here, 19 through 25, and you come out with so much more stuff that you go, wow, I think I have a much better handle on God's Word. And that's what we're after, right? That we can see this, that we can savor the Lord, and then we can just say, oh, wow, this is great. And then when we've done that, as we start to understand, we also come back and say, boy, how do I see God in this? And where do I see Jesus in this? And of course, because we've been working through it, we can just see how this works. We can enter the sanctuary through the blood of Jesus. He has inaugurated this, this new, he's doing a work in us, and living way in which we can return to him You know, through this curtain. That is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and, and a full assurance of faith. Faith in what? Well, faith in Christ, right? Um, how did our hearts get sprinkled clean? Well, they're, they're, they're sprinkled clean from the blood of Christ. Again, we're seeing what God is doing in us. He's washing us. We hold on to this confession of our hope. Confession of our hope with what? Jesus, our confession of our hope in Christ, and we do that without wavering, since He who promised, that who's that, is faithful. I mean, look at this. Look at where you see Christ in this, and we're encouraging. Uh, we're just, we're working in this, and we're saying, wow, there's Jesus. So, again, lots of different tools, not too tough. When you see Jesus all over the Scripture here, when you see the, the outlines that we showed you with the, you know, the sense this, and and since that, and um, since this one, and then you see, you know, let us, let us, let us. Wow, this thing just comes alive, doesn't it? You don't have to use the colors I've used. You don't have to use any system I've used, if you could even call this a system. But wow, just dig in and work on it and work through it and, and, and let it just flood over you. That you can enjoy it, that you can meditate on it, because blessed is the one who meditates on the the Lord day and night, His Word. That's from Psalm chapters 1 and 2. Boy, I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you can now take this and, and just start digging in and, and working in it and letting it transform you. We're going to be preaching on this. We're going to be working through it more. Uh, so maybe get a jump start on it. And let's just ask the Lord to do a mighty thing with Hebrews 10, 19 through 25 in.